Hello guys, welcome back to Between the Ropes TV. Now this is it. We used to Christmas crackers in years gone by. We've got one this weekend down in Bournemouth. Ray, I'm coming straight to you into this one, mate. It's fight week. Bill and Smith's back against Jacaj. We think we've got it right. We probably haven't. So if you do know, you know <laughs> Jacaj, I don't know, mate. Cheers. Your lane went a bit funny. That's it again. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you, you check you coming all peaky blinders, giving it that. Anyway, <laughs> Ray, break the fight down for me. I'm excited. You know I'm a Bill and Smith fan. Yeah. But this is surely a last one before the big one. Yeah, it's it's about time that he um, you know, we really get to see him tested again. Uh, you know, he's he's a pawn and can't be taken too lightly. Um, he was up against uh, Masanek. And he got beat in Masanet's a really highly rated um, Polish cruiserweight who's, who's been around the block um, more, on more than one occasion. So this is going to be a tough fight for um, for, for Billum Smith. But it's it's one that if if he if he gets this win, which I'm pretty confident he does, uh, we need we need to see him up against um, you know probably a, re a Riapo rematch. Um, you know, uh, Glowatsky, who's the other Polish uh, cruiserweight as well. Those are the potential names, but. You know, this is a potential banana skin. Um, Billum Smith, he, he came off that win against uh, Isaac Chamberlain in July. It was a, a very good dominant um, win over 12 rounds. But he's been busy this year because he, he stopped uh, Thomas McCarthy in that rematch. Mm -hmm. I think that was in April. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in front of his home fans. Uh, but I'll probably give him a, a, a bit of edge. But if he stops this kid and make a statement, particularly on the European scene, no, definitely. I mean, yes, Ray's just alluded there that this is a bit of a banana skin fight. Can you make a case for it being too much? You know, obviously we saw Bill and Smith headline against Isaac Chamberlain, but it does bring a new pressure, doesn't it? Can you see this all being a bit too much? Yeah, I see it from the angle of obviously he's won the Commonwealth and the Europeans. And obviously now he's going to be looking to make that progression onto the next stage with the world champions or the fringe world level fighters. So, of course, there comes a pressure with that. And obviously, we know um, Shane McGuigan and himself, they've been pushing for homecoming fights in Bournemouth. So, obviously, you've got your home crowd behind you. There's the pressure, there's expectation, because he knows if I win this, then there's progression to, you know, the next level, looking at them big level fights. So, of course, there there could be pressure because there's a, there's quite a lot to lose. He's coming off like like we, we all agree. I think we could all agree he won that. Um, Chamberlain fight quite he was a clear winner but it was a slugfest and he does I feel like as he's progressing I feel like he does need to probably try and not go to war as much because like when you get to that level how many times does he need to go to war before he fights for a world title then when he gets there like where, where's he going to be at so yeah I guess um, that that could pose problems if he gets himself dragged into another war again we don't know how he's going to look when he comes up against Makabu and other kind of champions. No, definitely. I mean, I've always maintained that although he does like to go to war, I think when he does, you know, box, he's got boxing ability. And, we, you know, we've seen that with Shane McGuigan on various fighters that he has sort of enhanced boxing abilities. Jack, are you wanting to see here from Chris Bill and Smith, you know, just come out, box clever, get whether it, the stoppage may come late or just get the decision, get the win? safely no cuts no damage and move on to the next one can he do that do you think yeah uh, i mean i've seen crispin and smith like since he was an amateur uh funny enough he was having wars back then like he's probably he had the best amateur fight i've ever seen against uh danny williams not the danny williams that fought uh mike tyson another boy from hayes but uh yeah, that was the best amateur fight i've ever seen um and then I spent a lot of time around him because I used to go down to Shane McGuigan's gym a lot. Like, I've seen him spar. Like, I know he can box, but he clearly just likes to have a tear up. And I would go as far as to say that he's got one of the best, um, not best records, but he definitely get he challenges himself that a lot of, which is my, I'm the biggest critic for saying that a lot of boxers go the easy routes. Like, he's fought Riyadh Paul, um, McCarthy, uh, Chamberlain's like mate as far as British level goes he's probably got one of the best resumes out there mm. for a British level fighter um, 
uh, to be honest, I don't know who th- uh, this fella is. He's, he, he's fighting. I do think that he, it is a walkover because he's obviously won the British outright, defended the Commonwealth like four or five times and now defended the European. I would imagine that they've said to him, have one more to stay busy. And then in the new year, we'll be looking for a world title shot. That's what I, I can only imagine this fight being. So I think this is a fight that he should walk through, probably get a stoppage early to mid, and then hopefully world title by the end uh, by next year. Perfect. Right, boys, just quickly, I want two words as a prediction off each. Obviously, Jack's just sort of given us his. So if Jack's going Billum Smith stoppage, Yas, Ray, I want it off you. Yas, you first. I'm going with um, Chris Billum Smith stoppage between round six to eight. Oh, accurate. I like it. <laughs> Come on, and Peaky Blinders, what are you going? I'm going to go for points, Billum Smith. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm with Ray here. I think, and I want to see it from Billum Smith as well, because I know he loves the war, but I'm a fan of his and I want to see some boxing ability. And this is the sort of fight that always makes me a little bit nervous because it's one of those where you've got a lot to lose, but there's not really that much to gain. Because as we've all just sort of mm. sat and said, it's a bit of a walkover. But there we go. Moving down the card, another one I'm very excited about. British title level, light heavyweight. Dan Aziz, obviously, he's made some noise on the Sky and Boxer platform, taking on Rocky Fielding, who has been inactive uh, since his world title reign of the regular belt, if you like, and then obviously got stopped by Canelo. But, Jack, I'll come to you first. Just break this fight down for us. And I suppose the biggest question is, what's Rocky Fielding got left? Yeah, f- funny enough, as I just said, uh, Chris Billum smith at British level, probably has the best resume. When I think about it, Dan Aziz actually has a very good one as well. Um, and he, and not only that, Dan Aziz has had most of his fights in the away corner and started off at the small hall level. So he really has done it the hard way from the southern area to the English to the British. And, uh, well, this isn't world level, but it's kind of like borderline. Rocky Fielding has been a world champion before. I actually think Rocky Fielding's still got a lot to offer, especially, like, I think at the stage of Danny Ziza's career, I think this is, the like, the right... These are the fights I want to see. Like, these are the fighters that, as I said, he's done it the hard way. He's won every title domestically now, and now he's taken on, like, a a fighter who was once world-class, shall we say, because he's been a world champion, but... Is on the decline, and these are these are the things that fighters should be doing, and I don't know why we don't see it. If boxing, if every boxer did this, boxing could be the best sport in the world, hands down, because it. This is what everyone wants to see, and it's what we as fans should be getting. So I think this has the potential to be like an outstanding fight, especially one towards the end of the year, at the end of the year to close the year off. Um, I think Rocky Fielding's definitely going to make it interesting. But I just think Dan Aziz has got him at the right time. And I Mm. think I'll go with a late stoppage for Dan Aziz. Interesting. Ray, I'll come to you next. Now, obviously, I agree, you know, Rocky Fielding, we all know my views on the the regular title situation. So Mm. he's he's a world champion with an asterisk next to it for me. But the, for me, it's Rocky Fielding's hunger. I've got no doubt the man was talented in the ring. But for me, obviously, he made a few million quid, four million pound rumoured for when he uh, obviously got blown away by Canelo. Since then, we've really not seen much of him. I just worry, is this a comeback for a bit of a, a bank balance top up? Am I right or am I being harsh in worrying about that, Ray? I think it being a bit harsh. I mean, he, he had a win this year. He had a win um, last year. Um, he's been as active as just about anybody, really. When you see fighters now fighting twice, maybe once a year, um, and obviously he had the COVID break. Um, many fighters, as we know, were, were affected by that. Um, you know, you, you look at uh, who he's fought, and I know he, he, he Jack talks about um, Dan Aziz going through that run at domestic level, and, and, and quite when you reel off the names that Dan Aziz has been in with, um, it's actually pretty impressive. Uh, when you when you look back at Rocky Fielding, he was kind of almost that guy, if you like, um, about seven, eight years ago. I mean, he still got that, that win against John Ryder. It, it's got better with age. Mm. Um, you know, and, and when he, when he beat uh, Zurich, the German, um, you know, that, that, that German kid was 
I wouldn't say, yeah, he was he was highly rated, but he was no mug. Um, you know, those were the days when it was really tough to go out and get a result in Germany. So Rocky Fielding's got a height advantage. Um, Rocky Fielding, he's, he can mix it inside. I remember when I was physically there when he fought Callum Smith. Um, and that was an absolute, you could have put the two of them in a, uh, the phone booth. So I, I do think um, Rocky Fielding has got has got enough left to cause Dan Aziz problems if Dan Aziz is going to take him lightly. But I do think when you look at Dan Aziz, I mean, when he, he's beaten like the likes of Charlie Duffield, Lawrence Zwecky, um, you know, uh, he's beat um, Sterling as well, Andre Sterling. Uh, uh, he's beat um, Jose Burton. Shakur, uh, Shaka and Peters. So these are good, good names at the domestic level. Um, but I just think he's, at this time, he's just probably too strong, too compact. Um, you know, he's got a good work ethic. He's powerful. And I just think later on, that'll just probably what will trouble Rocky Field. And not necessarily the inactivity. I just think um, Anazis at this point is just a bit too young, too fresh for him. What are you going prediction-wise? Um, I'm going to go for Dan Aziz. I'm going to go for Dan Aziz late stoppage. Interesting, interesting. Yes. Anything to add? Because to be fair, it's been a little while since we've got to enjoy a Ray breakdown of a fight. But he is comprehensive, isn't he, the boy? So anything to add on that? How do you see this one playing out? I see it. Um, I actually see it being a little bit tricky for Dan Aziz to, to begin with. Because as the other two have mentioned, Rocky Fielding, obviously, he's probably Dan Aziz's toughest, on paper, is his toughest fight to date for me at the moment. He's been in with the likes of Canelo, Callum Smith, although they didn't go his way and he lost quite convincingly against them. Um, I feel as though the experience, the physical advantages may pose Dan Aziz some problems early in the fight. But I feel as though once Dan Aziz has got himself set, um, even, yeah, we can go back to the point of Dan Aziz facing... Shakan Peters, who is obviously a lot taller and rangier than um, Rocky Fielding. But Rocky Fielding is more seasoned. He's been in there with high-level opposition. He's fought, he's competed at a high level. And obviously, he knows his way around the ring. And he, he has got a little bit of power as well. I think in his 30 wins, he's got 18, 18 stoppages. So he can ban. So let's not forget that as well. And they say the last mm. thing is your power. But I do feel as though as the fight wears on, I feel... That's where Dan Aziz is going to come on strong and he'll probably grind out a points win. He'll just be able to outwork him and I feel like he'll want it more in the in the later rounds. No, fair enough. Now, I like that, guys. I'm, I'm also going to Dan Aziz win. I just, I get what you're all saying, but I just worry about Rocky Fielding because although he has, you know, he's fought like once a year, he, it's not like the opposition's been top class. But we'll move on. Obviously, cruiserweight action, Riley and Buketa. Vidal Riley. He's obviously got a bit of a background about him, obviously, as a fighter and obviously also a social media star. But fair play to him. And we've spoke before on this channel about credit to him for steering clear of that influencer scene, despite, you know, obviously he could earn more money. Yes, I'll come to you first. Just break this one down for me and give us your thoughts on Vidal Riley. Well, Vidal Riley, you know, he's he's an up-and-coming guy. You know, he's um, he's I feel like he's he is making the right the right kind of strides, you know, in terms of his activity and whatnot for his progression within boxing and i feel as though um I, I respect him because it's very easy to go down that route like you just said of taking these influencer fights and getting paid five six times more than what he probably is really gonna get so um he's really dedicated to his craft i see him um coming in i don't really know too much about the guy he's, he's facing however i do see him because obviously he's really you can tell he's one of them fighters he's really on it with his craft he really wants to progress and get better as a boxer and a fighter. So I see him probably coming in this one and um, getting a stoppage win, to be honest. Interesting. Uh, Jack, I'll come to you next. What are your thoughts on Vidal Riley? Obviously, it's from a very different background uh, the, to obviously what you've spoken a lot about since you joined the channel. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I've, from what I'm aware, I'm pretty sure he did quite well as an amateur. Mm. And I've only seen him fight once. And he looks, he looks, he does look decent. A lot of people say that. Well, I mean, he is kind. He is an influencer, and he is around KSI and all them lot. So he's got a big following, which is why he gets on big shows. Um, a lot of people say he's around English level, 
And from what I saw against the opponent, he probably does look around that level. Um, I mean, he, he battered Ross McGuigan, who isn't very good, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Uh, I mean, it was a, I expected him to get him out in three rounds, and he did that. It's kind of hard to like say where he's going to go because of, obviously, the level of people he's fighting. Um, I mean, I wouldn't really say this is a step up, but I wouldn't really say it's a step down either. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, until he steps up, that like, I can't really have an opinion until he steps up, really, mm. because it's hard to, it's just hard to tell. Like, there's loads of good cruiserweights out there, and I, and I already just know the way his career is going to go. Like, he probably is going to fight these kind of people for a while, and then he's going to get an international belt against someone with probably a, like a 16 and five record that looks good on paper, but isn't very good. And they win that. And they just keep maneuvering through the rankings that way, which is like probably what 90% of fighters do now, which is a shame. But I mean, yeah, that's all I, that's all I can really say on it. No, no, I, I, I do get what you're saying. I think because of that commercial value and name draw that he brings, obviously Sky are going to uh, obviously try and protect him and keep that, keep that value in the name, so to speak. Uh, Ray, c can you get me a bit more excited about Vidal? I can't really, um, to be honest. Uh, but I think Jack's made a very good point. Um, he was a pretty nifty amateur. Mm. I think he had about 50 amateur fights. Mm. Um, and he won about 40 of them. So to, to be honest, he's, you know, he, you can see why he's he looks half decent in the ring. Um, I've always said I don't really like to judge prospects until they've had about 10 plus fights. Um, he beat uh, a lad from who boxes out in the North East. He's originally in the army uh, called TK Valau. He's originally from Fiji and uh, he blew him out there in, in a round. Yes, okay, TK has become a bit of a, a journeyman, but people tend to go three, maybe four rounds with him and he got he got him out there in a round. So mm. there is a little bit of explosiveness, but you would expect that from his, his amateur pedigree. I mean, he's boxing the Europeans as an amateur for England. So he can't be that bad. He'll still have some basic fundamentals. How far you can go? Well, as the boys are saying, the cruiserweight division is very competitive, um, and it's it's really level. It's like a three tiered system. You've got the likes of Lawrence, uh, uh, Lawrence Acoli at the very top, um, but then in in the sort of like the next tier, you've got the likes of uh, Billum Smith, um, Riakpo, and then underneath that, you've got the likes of um, like McCarthy. Um, Jose Burton, who have just been there, been there or, or thereabouts, um, he's not even in that category, to be honest. And I don't see anything so far to say he's, he's, he's going to be in there. He might prove us wrong. Um, he might get a, 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 a few wins, what have you. Um, again, I see what Yas is saying. He, he probably takes the, the boxing a bit more seriously than what people think. But uh, it's going to be a routine win for him Saturday night. No, I'm with you. I'm uh, in the same boat. And I think, you know, I don't disagree with Jack. I think it's one of those sad situations that you're probably not going to see him do too much until he's got nowhere else to go but get mm. tested and then he'll, he might fall mm. flat. But there we go. A bit more positive because I know we've got a couple of Michael McKinson fans. Now, obviously, back in August, he, uh, he dared to be great, if you like, against uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Didn't get the result he wanted. But in fairness, you know, he did show he, you know, he, he can definitely operate at that level. Uh, and, you know, that's another one of those losses that... We may be saying this time next year, depending on what Ortiz Jr. does next, that, you know, he's a special fighter. So, Ray, I'll come to you first. Obviously, the opponent, Ariaza. I think I've got that one right. Yeah, Roberto Ariaza, yeah. 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 Nicaraguan. Yeah. How do you see this one playing out? I think it'll be, uh, I mean, let's be honest, we thought Paulie Manning, lad, you couldn't punch. Uh, and I'm not being disrespectful to Michael Mickinson, but I can't see any other way but a, a points win. But um, it's a skill on show for Michael Mickinson. I like the way he's in and out of range. I like the way he, um, he, he encroaches forward with his lead foot. But as soon as he, he, his opponent wants to counter, he's back out of range again. Uh, he's really, he really excels at doing that. Um, and that's why he appears to be so slippery. As, um, as a fan of Southpaws, I find it really offensive for them when people start to say, oh, like the, the two, you know... Um, the two awkward actually the skillful it's not awkward it's skillful so i'm expecting the same uh for this i'm expecting a routine just to blow the cobwebs off 
And I still think Michael Mickinson will be looking for a big fight over in the States. No, definitely. I think it's, uh, yeah, just, you know, get back to it. Yes, it's also interesting to see him, obviously, now. Obviously, we've seen him on matchroom shows and zone shows. He's fighting on the Sky and Boxer platform. Do you think, is he going to be trying to push hard to put on a show? Yeah, 100%. Um, although he, um, Lat Ray alluded, he's not the biggest of punches. I think he's got an 8% KO ratio. So, you know, he's not he's not a puncher. So, therefore, he's going to try and impress with his skills, boxing out of that southpaw stance. And, like, um, he, he, he clearly showed he is a very good boxer, maybe a fringe world-level kind of guy. He went now nine rounds with uh, Virgil Ortiz. So, of course, I think he's going to try and really maybe showboat in there to show some boxing finesse mm. and that uh, uh, dominant points win. No, definitely. Jack, now, Michael McKinson, potentially someone that you might be a bit more of a fan of, because in fairness, he has took a lot of tough fights and uh, yeah. obviously been in the away corner. So what are your thoughts on Michael McKinson? Yeah, no, I, I rate him very highly. He's got, like, really good wins. Like, probably his biggest win on paper is Chris Congo. Mm -hmm. And he beat someone uh, very early on in his career called Ryan Martin for the WBC youth title, I think. And a lot of people probably don't know Ryan Martin, but, mate, he is a very talented lad. He used to come down to State of Mind and spar John O'Donnell all the time. And uh, when he was getting ready for that fight, obviously, McKinson was quite unknown at that point. And... Everybody thought Ryan was going to walk this fight, and then when he well, obviously when we heard that he got beat, no one, no one literally in the gym could believe it. Like Ryan is such a talented fighter, and like yeah, that it's one of them wins that no one will know know how good it actually was, especially early on in his career. But it was an amazing win, um, and then yeah, went off fought for a world title. Obviously, didn't go his way, but he was probably fighting. Like, you know, one of the most, maybe potentially an elite fighter. But as you said, we'll find out in a couple of years. I mean, it's it's good to see him back. I mean, the, the, the opponent's not great. I would like to have seen a better fight. But, I mean, he's back. We'll hopefully, you know, move on to next year and it'll be big things to come for him. No, definitely, definitely. Now, next, we've got some interesting heavyweight action. Obviously, Steve Robinson. I know Ray's a big fan of his. Uh, against Nick Campbell, England versus Scotland. Ray, I'm going to start with you because the last time we talked, Steve Robinson, I've got to be honest, I just needed, I was just missing a bag of popcorn. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm such a big fan of Steve Robinson, um, tongue in cheek. But I, no, I, I think uh, Steve Robinson needs this fight um, if he's to, if he's to make use of his, his contract with, with, with box any situation there. Um, you know, he's, he's obviously from, from my neck of the woods. Um, he's he's not really performed um, since he's since he's been on on, on TV. Um, you know, he, Campbell, his opponent in Scotland, um, he's 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 been better known to us. Um, he's going to be a strong opponent, uh, and I think he he could he could trouble Steve Robinson. I think Steve Robinson's been overly too keen on um, getting people out there with his right hand. He's telegraphing it. He's loading up on it, and he's leaving himself wide open, susceptible. So Campbell's got anything about him, he could exploit that and, and counter that. Could be all over for him. I'm hoping he smartens himself up and give, gives a better performance, but we'll have to wait and see. Nonetheless, it's entertaining. No, definitely, Jack. I'll come to you next. Your your thoughts around this fight? To be honest, dare I say that this could potentially be fight of the night, and not because they're both great. It's because they're both really bad. And I think that it could end up being just one of them really bad, like no technique, but just an absolute bar fight. And it could end up stealing the show. Like they both they both got power. I think Steve's five fights, three knockouts, one loss, and Nick is five fights, five knockouts. Um, you would say that Nick Campbell's probably got the better boxing ability mm -hmm. and probably the better record because he beat um Jay McFarlane for the Scottish title, the first uh, Scottish um, area title fight in 50 years. So that was a great achievement. Um, but yeah, I, I'm actually looking forward to that one. I think it, I, I think Nick will probably stop him, but it's one of them. Once it gets going and they're both just throwing shots, it could really go either way. It's whoever really lands first, I guess, isn't it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Jack, I'll push you for prediction. Who are you going for? I'll go Nick Campbell, round five. There you go. 
Ray, I didn't actually get an official prediction for you. I was just waiting for the fireworks. So, official prediction? Yeah, I, um, I'm going to go for Campbell. Uh, I'm going to go for Campbell on points. Yes. Bring it home for me. Talk to me. Well, this fight is, is I feel like it's a bit interesting because there's two giants, right? They're both like 6 7, Scotland versus um, Newcastle. Like, I think Glasgow, Newcastle, something like that. And they're two heavyweights. And obviously, Nick Campbell. I think he's probably going to come into this fight proper up for it because I was looking at the rankings and I saw he's 15th in Britain. So a win, he's not too far from the likes of, I'm not saying he's good enough to compete with them, but he's not far off from the likes of Johnny Fishers, um, Fraser Clarks, them, them kind of fighters. So I feel as though a win, he probably knows if I extend this knockout ratio, I can maybe learn the fight against a Fraser Clark or something. So I'm backing him to come away with a knockout win. Right, fair enough. You've thrown me there because I'm going to be honest. I think you could put both of them in the ring with Fraser Clark at the same time and my money's on Fraser Clark coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you completely threw me there, mate. But no, fair enough. Moving on, we've got Caroline Dubois back. Now, again, you're all going to mock me, but I've been very vocal about her as potentially the future of women's boxing, uh, oh, yeah. boxing oh, along yeah. with Ellie Scottney, before you take the pick. So, stop it, fucking Tommy Shelby. Come in here with you. <laughs> now, Ray, I'll come to you first. Just talk to us. I mean, in fairness, this fight, I think it's just another building fight. She's been pretty active, Caroline. And I, th I think she's just special. I would agree. I can't, there's nothing further I would add to that apart from, um, again, it's the same prospect thing for me in the sense that, um, and I think Jack's mentioned it before, we've all kind of said it at various points, the lack of depth in women's boxing is really, it's really um, glaring. It's glaring, glaringly bad. Um, that's not their fault. They beat who's in front of them. I'm expecting them to beat this last and what I want to see from her, because there's still enough depth in this country to have that domestic fight. You've got the people, uh, legs of Jordan Parker Porter, um, Parker P Porter, sorry, and that would be a good fight uh, domestically, just to see what, just to not necessarily see where she's at, but see how she copes on the, the big build up that fight would bring, the press conferences, because she's a bit like a brother. She's a bit like the shy kind of retiring type. She doesn't seem like a, a bit of a. Um, you know, like an Emily Bridges, mm. a bit of an extrovert. And I wonder how she, she handles that. I've got absolutely no qualms about her in the ring. Um, she's going to go on and she's going to dominate, not just lightweight, but uh, light welterweight and potentially welterweight as well. No, I'd agree. I'd also add she's a better boxer than her brother. Uh, oh, yeah, hmm. Yes, thoughts on Caroline DeBoer, just quickly. Yep, current, she's coming up against a South American fighter, so... Caroline de Bois is obviously seen as like, you know, the golden, the golden girl of um, British boxing for women, especially. So no doubt her opponent's going to come in motivated and really try and put it on her and shock the odds. I don't, um, I don't really see this fight going any other way apart from a Caroline Dubois stoppage win. Um, I think she's, she's even on a knockout. She's, in, she's even on a, like a KO um, streak right now. I think she won her last three fights within the distance. And obviously, she's been touted to do great things. And obviously, she's got a good coach in her corner with um, Shane McGuigan. So I see this fight going no other way and her just progressing onto um, bigger and better things after a good first year of debut because she's had five fights in her first year. No, definitely. She has been very active. Jack, just quickly, as the pro boxer amongst us, are we right to be as hyped up as we are around Caroline Dubois? Yeah, like, to be honest, there's... From what everyone said, there's not really much else like to say. Mm -hmm. Like she is, as um, yeah I said, she's the golden girl. As Ray said, there's not much depth. Um, as w when it comes to women's boxing, she's probably already an elite boxer and she's good enough to win a world title. So for the next probably four or five fights, we are probably just going to see her blast everyone out until she gets to the very top, and she'll probably still blast everyone out until she fights maybe like. But by the time she fights Katie Taylor, she'll probably be retired or way, way on the way down um, if that fight ever happens. I mean, really, it would be great if she just blasted this woman out and they made that fight next for a good domestic fight. I mean, she's good enough to fight her now. Katie Taylor, if she wins the, her next fight, there's not really much else for her to do. But, I mean, I doubt it will happen, but that's just like a, a dream fantasy. But, yeah. 
No, I get what you're saying. No, it would be uh, it would be special. Um, lastly, now yes, I'll come. I'll start with you. We've obviously got Corey Gibbs versus Jimmy first, uh, and you've obviously uh, found some interesting little trivia around Corey Gibbs. So, what are your thoughts on this fight and your, your little fun fact you found? Well, for this fight, I see it being I see it being a, a run out for um, Corey Gibbs, um, and I say that um, purely because I think he's um, he's fighting first who's I think 41 years old or something like that and although they're both on you know unbeaten streaks and whatnot I just feel as though Corey Corey Gibbs is he's where he is like he's ranked number eight in Britain so he's kind of you know touted to go on and do build like a little decent career for himself I see him coming through this fight quite comfortably and I also found actually I think I shared it with you guys earlier I was on box rec and I saw that he's fighting the night before as well I can't remember the opponent's name, but he's scheduled to fight the night before as well. So I see um, maybe they could be overlooking him because um, I, but I see it being a routine win for him and he'll probably pick up a stoppage win. Now, interesting. Jack, your thoughts on this one? And obviously you were talking about Corey Gibbs a little bit in the group chat. Yeah, obviously just a uh, touch on what Yas said there about the fight in the four. That can't happen. Um, you have to have at least... I think a week or maybe for a prospect two weeks, depending on the rounds, I think as well. Um, so that fight was probably maybe scheduled and then this fight just happened to come up. So that's probably just an old fight that's been put on. And then, you know, this is the current fight. So that fight won't take place just so everyone is, is like aware of that. Um, but yeah, no, I, obviously Corey Gibbs is definitely the better boxer. I mean, so yeah, Corey Gibbs is definitely the better boxer. Um, and he's probably fought the better people. But having said that, his three biggest wins were only three rounders in the boxer tournament. So once you do step to like, I mean, a three round fight is completely different to a 10 round fight. And I don't, I don't think he's actually ever gone past six. If I'm, I could be wrong. Maybe he's done an eight, but he's definitely not done a 10 and he's definitely not done a 12. Um, and uh, Jimmy, Jimmy first, it's actually an amazing story. Like started 2017 when he was like 36 then went on, beat a pro beat a prospect who was nine and one, fought someone else who was thirteen and oh at forty years old, got dropped in the first round and stopped the guy in the second to become like central area champion. And now he's got a big massive fight on Sky. So it's kind of like a fairy tale story for him. Um you know, I'd I, I would just love to see uh first win it because I think it's just an amazing story. But I think obviously you know like my heart's telling me first, but my boxing knowledge is telling me Gibbs is going to school him and maybe stop him. Uh, if I was going to push for a prediction, I think Jimmy first will give it a really good go. But I think in the middle rounds, I think, you know, Gibbs will work him out and probably put him away in round like six to eight. No, interesting. Ray, wrap us up, mate. Your thoughts on uh, Corey Gibbs? Yeah, I think um, in the in the tournament that he was in, I mean, he, he beat some uh, he beat some good names um, at that level, um, and, and yeah, it is it is completely different over over three rounds. Um, I remember watching your prize fighter ones, which Audi Harrison was winning, and, and 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 things like that. And it is a it's like a sprint rather than a marathon, which is associated with, with pro boxing. Um, so yeah, I, I'm from from what I've seen of Corey Gibbs. Admittedly, I haven't seen much. I haven't seen uh, you know m much of first at all. Um, but from what I've seen of Corey Gibbs, I see enough there uh, for him. As provided he sticks behind his job, he doesn't get greedy. I expect him to get a points win. No, interesting guys. We'll wrap it up there. Before we finish, guys, we've got a new TikTok page at Between the Ropes TV twenty two. So check that out. Yas has got lots of good content coming on there. And also, we are now on Facebook. Uh, we joined last week, and that is just Between the Ropes TV. So check those pages out, as well as our usual Instagram and Twitter pages. Plenty more great content coming, in, including a few really special interviews that we're really excited about. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one.